October 14th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of our Holy Mother, Pereskivi the New. Now, Pereskivi was fortunate enough to be born of a very wealthy and aristocratic family from the town of Silivria, which was about 55 kilometers west of Constantinople. She had a lot of money and every advantage that one could expect for that sort of position at that time. However, her parents also trained her to be very devout and very church-loving and God-loving, and these virtues were present in her even from a very early age. Once, when she was about 10 years old, she traveled with her mother to a church of the Theotokos, and during that time, she heard a gospel reading which said, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Well, this struck the young lady to the quick. It was as if divine grace had suddenly flooded her soul, and she became completely enamored of the idea of following the Lord in as stringent and fervent a way as she possibly could. So the mother and the daughter left the church, and the mother went on home. The daughter sort of took her time coming back, pondering the things that she had heard recently, when she came upon an old beggar woman. And seeing the beggar woman and feeling very sorry for her, she took off her own clothes, which were very rich and costly, and exchanged them with that of the torn garments of this beggar. When she got home, her parents admonished her. They were not happy with this at all and really instructed her never to do it again. And in fact, they spanked her. And this wasn't the only whipping that she would get because over the next period of time, she went out and often exchanged her own costly dresses for the very poor apparel of so many of the beggars that she encountered. She finally was at a crossroads, even at this young age, again, remember, 10 years old. And she decided that her parents, who were absolutely hindering her from following the Lord in as fervent a manner as she desired, that she had to leave her household. This, of course, was a very difficult situation for her, but on she went and headed into the big city, into Constantinople. Her parents, of course, were absolutely distraught. They tried to track down Pereskivi, but she moved around quite a bit, visiting a lot of the holy places, seeking the advice of the many holy elders and mothers at the time in the city, and was almost like a vagabond going from place to place seeking spiritual guidance. Her parents simply couldn't keep up with her. So they finally returned home, very distraught at the fact that they had seemingly lost their daughter. And in fact, throughout her life, we do not know whether or not she had any more contact with her parents or not. But her fervent desire was to be with Christ, and she wasn't going to let anything get in the way of that. After a while, she found a certain church of the Theotokos in Constantinople and stayed there for about five years, attending the divine services, practicing some very, very ascetic uh, vigils, sleeping on a straw mat, taking water and practically nothing else, and that only sparingly every single day. Then, when she attained the age of around 15 years old, she went on and tried to find her way into the Holy Land where she could venerate uh, all of the holy places and seek the guidance of those elders there. 
all the while continually exercising her extreme asceticism and love for Christ. She became known to people as someone who is just overwhelmingly full of love for everyone. After this, she returned back to Constantinople. And there, when she finally attained the ripe old age, 33 years old, the same age as our Lord when he was crucified, and which many sources claim to be the fullness of years, at that point she reposed in peace. We don't know much more aside from the fact that her uh, burial took place and it was seemingly non-existent. No one knew where it was. But then years later, something surprising happened. There was a man who was an incorrigible sinner, an evil person uh, that no one liked and no one was sorry to see go. And they took this man and buried him in a certain spot. And as it happened, it was near the hidden grave of St. Pereskivi. So she appeared in a dream to one of the uh, local or pious people that were there and said, you've got to move that man. I am enjoying light and heaven and I cannot tolerate the stench of his sins. The man woke up from this dream and was completely surprised, not knowing what to think about it because after all, we are told to ignore dreams and that's what he did. But then she appeared again a second time, even more insistent. Again, when he woke up, he thought, this is strange, twice in a row. But yet he didn't do anything because he was a little bit troubled and wasn't sure how to respond. When at last she appeared to him a third time, she revealed her name to him. And after that, she even told him the location of her grave. The man went to the church authorities in the area, told them what had happened, and so the authorities went, found the grave, brought up her holy relics, which were completely incorrupt and fragrant, and then buried them in a suitable spot. It is not known how many miracles happened on that day, even from people that came close to the reliquary, all sorts of healings and other kind of problems were just evaporated in front of them. So goes the life of Pereskivi the New, so called the New because she was uh, differentiated from the very famous Pereskivi who lived about 700 years earlier because Pereskivi the New lived actually about a thousand years ago during the time of the Great Schism between East and West. However, from an early age, she demonstrates to us how devout that we should be putting our Lord Jesus Christ before us as if nothing else in the world matters. Because truly, nothing else in the world matters.